The Olympic Games, right from its very beginning, have been known to be an event for the best performances from the best athletes around the world. But sometimes, one can still expect some embarrassing performances from these events. Here are some of the most embarrassing performances in Olympic history. And trust me, the last one on this list takes the embarrassment to a whole new level. Number 1. Eric Mosambani Nicknamed Eric the Eel by the media, Eric got brief international fame at the 2000 Summer Olympics for an improbable victory. His performance might initially strike you as remarkably poor. However, in just 1 minute and 52 seconds, he managed to capture the hearts of an entire audience. Originating from the small and developing nation of Equatorial Guinea, Eric participated in the Olympic Games due to the Olympics' initiative to make the Games more inclusive. His country was invited to participate in the Olympic Game. Upon hearing about the swimmer auditions in his country, he seized the opportunity. This is someone with no swimming experience. He would go on to learn how to swim in just eight months before the Olympics. He trained in a modest 20-meter pool at his hotel. Upon arriving in Sydney for the Games, he didn't even have goggles or an appropriate swimsuit, which could have led to his disqualification. Luckily, he was saved by a generous South African coach, who provided him with goggles and a swimsuit. On the day of the race, Eric, who had never seen an Olympic-sized pool, was met with a 50-meter swimming pool. This was more than double the size of the pool he practiced with. But something interesting happened. During his initial heat, his two other competitors were disqualified due to false starts, leaving him to be the only swimmer. During the race, his inexperience was made evident. With a clumsy dive and inefficient technique, he almost barely flopped. And then he started like a sprinter, without even catching his breath or conserving his energy. By the 25% mark, Eric was already tired. And on the return lap, one can only wonder if he would even finish. But despite his struggles, the crowd's reaction was telling. At first, they appeared puzzled by his performance. But halfway through the race, the crowd began to notice Eric's struggle. His legs were dragging below him, and he was barely making any progress as he was gasping for breath all the while. Then the crowd began to realize that they were witnessing something very remarkable. They recognized this was a rare historic moment as they witnessed someone from a developing country where swimming lessons and teams were uncommon, bravely taking on such challenge on the world stage. Eric gave his best as he had never even swum a full 100 meters in his life. When he finally reached the wall, the crowd gave him a standing ovation. It was so overwhelming that he wondered if he had won a medal. Although Eric's time was too slow to advance to the next round, he was able to set a new record for the slowest 100-meter time in Olympic history. He later became the coach of the national swimming squad of Equatorial Guinea. Number 2. Shiso Kanakuri Shizo Kanakuri was a Japanese athlete with the world record for the slowest time in the history of the Olympic marathon, which is 54 years, 8 months, and 6 days. But despite holding such a record, he also holds a world record marathon time of 2 hours, 32 minutes, and 45 seconds. During the 1912 Stockholm Olympics marathon race, Japan, due to financial constraints, said it could only afford to send two athletes to the Olympics. Funny enough, the country couldn't even afford that. Shiso, in his effort, had to fundraise his way to Stockholm. His journey to Sweden was incredibly challenging. Much of it was spent on the Trans-Siberian Railway, which was still under construction at the time. He endured 18 days of rough travel, filled with noise, coal smoke, unfamiliar foods, poor water quality, and even bouts of diarrhea. Upon his arrival in Sweden, he faced another setback, as his coach suffered from tuberculosis. This left Kanakuri without proper guidance during the little time he had to prepare. However, the details of how he spent that time wasn't clear enough. The unfamiliar local cuisine also posed some serious problems for his stomach. On the morning of the race, Shizo Kanakuri signed in and lined up with the other marathoners. The race began as soon as the signal was given. However, the day was scorching hot, with temperatures sometimes reaching 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Midway through the race, around two-thirds of the way, Kanakuri had seemingly suffered from heat exhaustion. But luckily, he accidentally wandered into a garden party. The Petra family, who hosted the party, kindly offered him cinnamon rolls, raspberry juice, fresh clothing, and a bed to rest in. And that was how he ended his race. The race itself was extremely difficult due to the harsh weather. Only half of the runners managed to finish the race. Authorities had to backtrack the route to find stragglers. 
Tragically, one runner had to be hospitalized and passed away the following day, marking the first modern Olympic death. By the end of the race, 67 out of the 68 runners were eventually accounted for, and Shizu Kanakuri was missing. Nobody knew where he was. Feeling embarrassed by his failure to complete the race, he returned to his hotel, quietly checked out, and began his grueling journey home without informing Olympic officials. Sweden would make jokes about the sightings of a Japanese marathon runner dressed in old-fashioned clothes, asking for directions to the finish line. He was regarded a mysterious figure known as Japan and San Fosan, the Japanese who vanished. His mystery gained momentum in 1962, marking the 50th anniversary of his disappearance. But in 1967, a Swedish TV station took it upon itself to investigate the story. They reported that Kanakuri had withdrew from the race halfway through. The TV station later invited him to finish the marathon, which he agreed to. He was brought back to the Petra farm, where he had abandoned the race. He finally completed the race he had started as a single man, but this time as a married man with six children and ten grandchildren. He was given a gold medal and a Guinness Book of World Records entry for the longest marathon in history. If you are enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel will be epic. Number 3. The 1904 Olympics in St. Louis The 1904 Summer Olympics was officially known as the Games of the Third Olympiad. It was held in St. Louis, Missouri from August 29 to September 3, 1904. The Games were part of an extended sports program that ran from July 1st to November 23 at what is now known as Francis Olympic Field on the campus of Washington University. The 1904 game was the first to award gold, silver and bronze medals for first, second and third place. The game also saw the introduction of new sports including boxing, freestyle wrestling, decathlon and a dumbbell event. But the game would turn out to be one of the most embarrassing events due to how it was poorly managed. The most bizarre part of the event was the men's marathon, which took place on August 30, 1904. The 24.85 mile race took place on dusty country roads during the hottest part of the day with only two water sources. The marathon was infamous for its disastrous management, making it one of the most chaotic marathons in sporting history. Participants were faced with the worst challenges anyone could possibly imagine. They were fed junk foods like raw eggs and also the consumption of liquor. Some of them even ended up having food poisoning. The race became more chaotic when feral dogs were spotted on the tracks, and the worst part of it all was that there were no medical support teams on ground to help the athletes. As if the chaos was not enough, it was later discovered that the event organizers intentionally limited drinking water just so they could carry out an experiment on purposeful dehydration. Probably the worst period to conduct such a research. In the end, only 14 of the 32 competitors were able to finish the race. The first winner was disqualified after it was discovered that he'd taken a car ride for part of the race. Thomas Hicks would later become the official winner, but he nearly died after he had been fed spoiled and raw food, which caused him to hallucinate as he almost collapsed towards the end of the race. According to today's standards, the winner would still be disqualified because he needed help to cross the finish line. This horribly orchestrated event, which was the first US-hosted Olympics, led to an audit and referendum on how the game would operate going forward. Number 4. The 1972 Summer Olympics in Munich, Germany The 1972 Summer Olympic Games in Germany is not just considered one of the most embarrassing events, but it's also one of the most tragic and terrorized Olympics in history. The game was mad by a terrorist attack on Israeli athletes on September 5th. The attack was carried out by eight Palestinian terrorists, led by Latif Afif, Yusuf Nazel and other members of Black September, who invaded the Olympic village. The terrorists killed two Israeli team members and held nine others hostage in exchange for the release of 200 Palestinian prisoners in Israel. This horrible event marked the first time a global audience would witness terrorism in action. It also inspired television networks to cover breaking news as it happened, which helped usher in a new era of television. Despite the embarrassing situation, Avery Brundage, the fifth president of the International Olympic Committee, insisted that the games continue even after the terrorist attack and the Israeli athletes being held hostage. The event was later put on hold after the Olympic officials had educated Brundage on how disgraceful it was to allow such an embarrassing event to go on. The attack began around 4 a.m. on September 5th. 
the terrorists climbed over the fence of the athletes' village and entered two apartments where the Israeli team was sleeping. They tortured the hostages and killed two of them who tried to resist. One of them was Moshe Weinberg, a wrestling coach, and the other was Yosef Romano, a weightlifter. The terrorists demanded the liberation of more than 200 Palestinians held in Israeli prisons. They demanded for the release of Andreas Border and Ulrich Meinhof of the Red Army faction from German prisons. And they also demanded the provision of an airplane to fly them to a safe destination in the Middle East. During the terrifying standoff with German police that was broadcast live around the world, the police planned to ambush the militants and free the hostages, but it ended in disaster as they realized that their plans were being broadcast live to nearly 1 billion people around the world and on many televisions throughout the Olympic village. At around 10 p.m., the terrorists and their nine remaining hostages were transferred by two helicopters to the military airport where they would board a plane bound for an unknown Arab country. But the German police opened fire on them, and this led to a serious gun battle. Several terrorists and sadly one police officer were killed in the gun battle. To worsen the situation, one of the terrorists, knowing fully well they are not getting out of the situation alive, boarded one of the helicopters and shot four of the hostages, killing them instantly. He then threw a grenade that severely damaged the helicopter. Meanwhile, the other terrorist got onto the second helicopter and fired his machine gun at the remaining five hostages, killing them instantly. This resulted in what was known as the airport bloodbath. The rescue attempt was a complete failure, as none of the Israeli hostages made it out alive. Jim McKay, the ABC sportscaster, broke the news to millions of people watching in horror back home. Three of the terrorists survived the attack and were arrested. However, less than two months later, the German government released the three remaining terrorists after two other Black September members hijacked a plane and threatened to blow it up unless the three were set free. Despite how horrible the event was, it gave new attention to the Palestinian cause. Over a million Palestinians have been refugees since Israel's establishment in 1948, yet global powers had largely overlooked their plight. But Israel's Prime Minister, Golda Meir, was not buying that as she would later authorize the assassination squads to carry out an operation called Operation Wrath of God. This was aimed at assassinating all those involved in the attack. On September 6, a mass service was held in the main stadium to commemorate the victims after the Olympic Games were suspended for 34 hours. The Games continued at the insistence of President Avery Brundage, who famously said, the Games must go on. So there you have it. Which of these was more embarrassing to you? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and share it. And if you have not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. I'll catch you guys in the next one.